Hello and welcome. You are tuned into Municipal Focus. My name is Kevin Tachi, and I'll be your, your host for this particular show. Joining us today for a special program, we have the Executive Director of the Old Colony Planning Council, Mary Waldron. Mary, welcome to the show. Hi, Kevin, and thank you for having me. I know that, you know, it's been some time since you and I have, have chatted. I think, I think when we did chat, it was height of COVID. Has yeah. It been that long? Yeah, it has. Well, uh, I, I see as though the, the organization has endured. And I know we're kind of looking right now towards the fall, and there's a lot of uncertainty still because of the Delta variant. Uh, but how have things been going for, uh, for the organization? So we really have been able to pivot um, along with our other partners and stakeholders. Um, I think that comes from a, a number of things, um, not only uh, the capacity of the staff that um, are here at Old Colony Planning Council, um, but it also is, a, is attributed to our delegates and alternates. We have 17 communities within the area um, from Plymouth, um, to Plimpton, to Easton, and Stoughton, um, and in between. Uh, but it's called communication. And uh, Christine Joy, um, the select uh, woman from um, the town of Plimpton, is our chair. And we talk um, on an ongoing basis. Um, we inform. We remain transparent. And I think that's probably the best foundation that we could have. Um, and then we have our staff who are resilient in the sense of, you know, knowing that there's been some funding that has come from the federal government, um, not just the um, CARES funds that went to Plymouth County. Um, we were not able to access that, but we were able to provide technical assistance. None of a number of, not saying none, a number of our communities didn't even know what the word Zoom was or what tool that is. And we provided first to many of them, um, the use of our, our access, you know, something as simple as that can go a long way. So, yeah, um, we're, we're, we're continuing to pivot, um, having my sneakers on all the time to, to kind of, uh, you know, one day I'm talking about traffic, another day I'm talking about area agency on aging, another time I'm talking about um, planning as it relates to resiliency. So um, I think that's the part that uh, we as an organization can be helpful to our communities, our stakeholders, the citizens, um, and, and including informing. And, you know, I think, Kevin, one of the things that I know that um, you did and, and some of the other media outlets were really to serve as a conduit for making that happen, um, having that tool, right? Because not everybody looks at social media, not everybody reads a newspaper, either online or in person, and having the communication be informative, be truthful and helpful is 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 so much appreciated. During your uh, your answer, you had mentioned uh, the CARES Act funding, uh, which which is set to, I believe, run out for communities uh, at the end of December. What about the the, the latest uh, federal funding that is COVID related? The uh, the American Rescue Plan Act (ARPA). Mm -hmm. we, will your organization be able to tap into that and be able to get some resources from it? We will um, through a various through various sources. So, for instance, um, we worked collaboratively with Congressman Lynch's office when they were putting together the transportation package that's in in Congress now. Um, the 1.2 trillion. Um, we have a number of our communities that we were able to work in. The congressman's office was dogged about that, and which are which are shovel ready. So yes, that one is one piece. Um, the Economic Development Administration under the um, Congress, I mean com uh, uh, Commerce Secretary, that that um, that we are constantly in conversations with them. We've been sitting in on. We were given heads up; it's coming. We were told when the uh, webinars to inform. Um, are there, and we've been reaching out to our various communities, um, including, you know, the, I could go on, like all of our community, our communities pretty much are there. So that's on the economic development side. And then as we're hearing that there's um, uh, funding for high speed internet and um, that type of infrastructure, in addition to um, climate change and 
um, and, and the resiliency. So we are we are we have a number of staff, but in particular Joanne Zygman, who is our senior um, economic development and and environmental planner. She's been on top of that. We brought her on specifically because she's got that um, um, capacity along with Lori Muncy from our team. So we're ready. Um, we're, we, we may be um, adding um, people to our staff, which is great, a, a good growing pain. Um, and one more piece in terms of what's coming from the federal government is also from the um, um, elder affairs and um, our area agency on aging, dealing with our senior population. We work in partnership with the um, old colony elder services. Um, I know where our names are very similar, but we do work in partnership with them to make sure that we're able to address our most vulnerable population. So, um, yep, we're ready. <laughs> what are you What are you preparing for come the fall? Because I know that. The summer months for a lot of organizations, whether it's government or nonprofit, kind of a bit of a lull, but a lot of times it's gearing up towards the fall where activity really picks up. So I wish I said that we have slowed down from the summertime. Um, obviously, COVID and, and, and the Delta have had a lull and now picking up, but for our team, um, I will tell you that these last two weeks have been my busiest weeks um, since I've been here. And that's a lot of it had to do with some of the transition with our communities. Um, so we've been meeting one-on-one -on -one, um, and we're not done yet with each of our communities. We bring in the town administrator, we bring in some of the staff. Um, they've been coming here to our office and then we will go back out to the communities asking them what their priorities are. How can we help you? Where can we be of assistance? So we don't want to go in, in, into, a, into an area that they're already um, well-versed and, and ready to go. We want to be able to say, listen, we're looking for some data about X, Y, and Z. So we'll assist. And that's our job is really to be behind the scenes. Like we're to be looked at as an extension of the communities. Um, to help them get their 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 projects done. So to answer the question, you know, the busyness is that it's it's going to take an uptick. Transportation's going to uptick. The again, the um, the planning and climate um, and resiliency is all going to be part of where we're going. And um, and at this point, it depends upon where how much funding and what we you know what we're able to apply for, um, and whether we expand the number of people in our office. And do you expect to have more conversations knowing that a lot of the communities are going to be getting ARPA funding and a lot of it is going to be geared towards maybe they need to put, you know, sidewalks in, in uh, some part of their community, or maybe that, you know, this, that troublesome intersection, you know, mm -hmm. that they're, they're going to come to you and say, can we discuss the data so we can really pursue these funds? Is that about the scope of it? It is. So the wonderful thing is, is that we have um, a great partner in the Plymouth County um, commissioners and Plymouth County government. Um, they've done an extraordinary job. Um, so working with them, because again, we're not part of the distribution of those funds. We certainly are, are looking to continue having those dialogues with the, with the community. So, you know, on our, some folks in some communities see us only as a transportation device and mechanism where we do road safety audits or we do traffic counts, but that data gathering is so critical. Um, I would probably say within the last month, maybe two months, um, the highest request from our communities is in fact to gather those data, the road safety audits and literally seeing what the complications are. But that means having conversations with our state partners in MassDOT. So um, I think what we're, our goal really is to help prioritize, work with our communities to prioritize because we can't do everything. You take many, you, you know, we can take a city of Brockton where the, the need's gonna be endless because of old infrastructure, but you can say the same thing about the town of Plymouth and what their needs are. So we ask for, from the communities, we ask for a strategic plan if they have one. Um, we ask if they would like our help in developing that. Um, and at the very least, we just want to be able to work with the select board, who are the decision makers. We want to work with the town staff, who are the implementers of those policies. You know, and then 
look for other opportunities. Um, we have a staff member, Dottie Fuginetti, who herself is a select board member from the town of Easton, but she's our economic recovery planner. And with that, she is constantly having her eyes on um, not only the federal funding that's coming, but also nonprofit organizations and other foundations that can support the work of a community and also the region. It sounds as though besides being, you kind of tick down the list of things that in fact, Old Colony Planning Council specializes in, but it also means that you also have to be the master of communicating and partnerships and have everybody on the same page, regardless of the level of government or involvement, correct? It, it is exactly correct. Um, the, you know, we never go into a community saying, you must do this. We go into a community where it is important to, um, to work with them, to know that they're partners. Um, we only have a small amount of funds that we can distribute and we try to do it equally throughout the region. Um, we go where we're wanted and we don't, I wouldn't say we step away from where we're not because sometimes that is beyond their control as well. So, you know, we never give up on our community, um, but we also need to make sure that we, we support what, um, again, the collaborator, convener, um, embracing the needs, you know, and, and the idea would be, let's not do one, the same type of project in each of the communities. We wanna be able to say, here's a bunch of you that wanna do a housing production plan. Here's how you do it. And here's the steps to do it go as far as you can take it, and then we'll come in and support with community outreach and things of that nature. And you're just tuning in. Uh, we are speaking with Mary Waldron. She is the uh, executive director of the Old Colony Planning Council, and we're doing a little bit of uh, catching up to see uh, the latest that are on that is ongoing with the organization. Uh, before we, uh, we get ready to wrap up, I mean, we still got a couple of minutes left here, um, for the folks who can't, who can't, who don't understand what they're seeing, or what I'm explaining here, uh, talk to us. I believe you have something new in your background in our conversation here. I, Kevin, I do, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, one of the things that we have um, taken on is like a re little bit of a revival of. Um, we had a strategic planning process ourselves last year that led to, um, you know, our what our focus is. Um, with that, we took a look at what our former logo was like, and we developed a new logo. Um, so I have as my background of my on my uh, Zoom meeting here is, you know, what represents housing and, you know, economic development, um, the, you know, natural resources, but also, you know, some roads and water and all of the things that are necessary. Um, this past year, we did an end of the year report summarizing all the work that we did last fiscal year. Um, but we're also, as we're get, you know, we're right in the middle of the next fiscal year, what are we gonna achieve? How it's gonna be delivered? And what are, you know, what are the points of seeing moving that needle? Um, we never rest on our laurels. So the logo uh, was done um, uh, in partnership internally um, discussions, but we brought it to a local um, design firm that is within OCPC's district. The buy local piece is so important to us. Um, and uh, we are we're really embracing that. It's been I, across the, 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 the Commonwealth. When I've been on meetings, I have this logo up and um, people really do love it. So that is one piece. Um, and on top of that, we'll be um, updating our website that will be much um, more user friendly. And if folks wanted to check out the website to once it's once it's done, what is that address? It is www.ocpcrpa.com. Okay. Uh, as we get ready to wrap up here, anything that we haven't touched upon, um, but you want to make sure you take a moment to at least um, discuss? Well, first of all, it's not .com, it's .org. <laughs> My head is a little bit so... <laughs> um, I, you know, I really do welcome um, many to call our office, um, to reach out to any of the staff, um, to look at our, our current website, 
Um, but go through and get involved in your community. You know, if you wanted to be part of a public safety committee of your community, be part of a green communities you know, committee, um, that your voice through your community is really important. If we do hear from you directly, we do involve the, you know, the, the local city and town officials because we know it's important. Um, so, you know, water and roads and air do, do not stop at town borders. And so that's our role as a regional planning agency to make sure that those type of issues and, um, and planning that goes along with it. So www.ocpcrpa.org. Okay. Final piece is actually a personal piece but it's also kind of a little background to who you are, somebody who's very community oriented, somebody who likes giving back and somebody who's a caring person, but somebody who also just uh, completed a, uh, a little bit of a marathon uh, as a part of the Pan Mass Challenge. Uh, congratulations on completing, uh, completing it. Is this your second year or third year doing this? It's my second year. I skipped a couple years in between, um, and this year happens to also be um, I'm a I'm a cancer survivor. It's been ten years, and um, I I'm blessed to have support of so many people, including you, Kevin. Um, it's um, until until it's eradicated, um, I'll keep riding my bike and and finding support for cancer research. Well, congratulations on on that milestone and. And that fantastic ride, you and your team, Team Jake, uh, uh, well recognized uh, in so many different ways <clears throat> this year. And again, we've been speaking with Mary Waldron, who has been our guest. A little bit of a personal thing in the end there, but I want to kind of take a moment to uh, uh, recognize her and her um, her uh, involvement. Again, community oriented, somebody who cares and gives back. Um, thank you for joining us for this very special segment, Mary. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you for your personal kind note. But I look forward to coming back and um, sharing more about what Old Colony Planning Council does and some of even our, our staff members to be here. And, and that is correct. This is, we are planning on doing a regular update <clears throat> with Mary about what it is that Old, Old Colony Planning Council <clears throat> does on a regular basis. So uh, thank you very much for adding that that note uh, as we wrap up. Thank you, Kevin. And we want to thank you for tuning in to shows like Municipal Focus. If you have something that you would like to see for a special segment on Municipal Focus, reach out to us at info at whca.tv. That's your best way of doing so. Until next time, have a great day.